Prime Minister, thanks so much for giving us some time here in Washington. Wonderful to be here. You've spent a fair bit of time over the last few days with President Biden, and it seems pretty much every time he's appeared alongside you, he's said something about China, expressing concerns about China or the Indo-Pacific, even uh, warning you about trusting China. Why do you think that is? Well, what we have is, in President Biden's own words yesterday, uh, we want competition but without conflict. So the strategic competition in our region between the United States and China, the two great powers in global politics, is just a factor. It's a factor in our region and it's something that uh, is uh, some of the backdrop, if you like, to all the, the relationships which are there. It's a, clearly a concern for President Biden. I mean, do you trust China? Well, what we need to acknowledge is that uh, we have different political systems and different values. But what I say is that we'll cooperate where we can, uh, we will disagree where we must, and we'll engage in our national interests. And that's something that uh, President Biden also supports. Uh, my concern uh, with the relationship between the United States and China is that there has been uh, good, good engagement at the diplomatic level, at senior uh, ministerial level equivalent in Australian terms. Uh, but uh, military to military, there's still a lack of engagement. We need to build in guardrails, as I spoke at the Shangri-La Dialogue in June in Singapore. And so do you see Australia playing a role in helping that dialogue? I, I think uh, both China and the United States probably see Australia as playing a role. We're, we're a middle power. So uh, an, in, an in between? Well, we're a middle power. We're clearly, uh, our allies uh, is very clear. Uh, we have an alliance with the United States. We're a strategic partner with the United States. Uh, but we're also a player in the region. We'll host uh, ASEAN leaders in March next year. And uh, I think that uh, Australia's word is very important uh, in the world. We've participated. Uh, in as a G20 member, but we also participate in forums like the G7 and NATO. But I'm just interested in what you said there. Do you see Australia as a go-between the two big powers? Well, not, not so much a go-between because it's clear where we stand as a democratic nation. Uh, but uh, we are a nation that does engage in our own interests. We're a sovereign country. Uh, but uh, the relationship with China is obviously important for Australia. They're our major trading partner. Uh, something like uh, one in four of our export dollars uh, comes from China. Uh, but the United States, of course, is our largest two-way investment partner. So our economic relationships are important. And historically, uh, we have had a, a, a relationship with China. I will visit, of course, next month. What do you want to achieve with that visit? Just opening up that engagement. Uh, very clearly, it's in Australia's interest to engage with China as our major uh, source of our, our trade. Uh, we've seen major breakthroughs when it comes to removing some of the impediments that have been there for trade. The wine decision alone uh, will be worth uh, around about $1.2 billion to Australia. Bali was worth $900 million to Australia. We've had decisions on, on timber, on hay, and on other products. So this, there, is, all, this is all good there's news. There's more to do. This is the, where you can cooperate, as you say, but as you say, you also want to be able to disagree where you must. Where, well, we, where we, do you disagree? We, we disagree on the basis of our political systems, on issues like human rights, on issues such as uh, access to uh, the South China Sea, the East China Sea, the, the Taiwan Straits. We think that uh, the uh, UN Convention on the Law of the Sea allowing for that tr free, free flow of trade uh, through those waterways are very important uh, for Australia. Obviously, uh, there have been issues there. Uh, there are issues of human rights uh, where we have different positions and we'll put those positions uh, strongly, uh, clearly, and uh, directly uh, to China. And I think that's the way that you build a relationship, though, is to have that 
those straight talks and I believe Australia's in a position to do so. What about China's role on the world stage? Uh, Xi Jinping's just hosted Vladimir Putin in Beijing. He's refusing to condemn Hamas. Are those things you'll raise? Uh, absolutely. Uh, we have a very different position uh, when it comes to uh, the, the actions of a terrorist group like Hamas and we've seen the, the dreadful consequences. Uh, the consequences of the Russian invasion of Ukraine uh, continue to reverberate around supermarket shelves in Australia. So Australia needs to engage with the world. We need to have a seat at the table and my government's determined to do so. Now, um, I want to ask you about the state of democracy here in the United States. Um, you've been watching it up close uh, and, and involved in it this week. Um, the House finally appointed a new speaker uh, while you've been here. Uh, this is someone who did fight pretty hard to overturn Joe Biden's election win. He's known as a, a leading election denier, as they call it here in, in Washington. Does that concern you that there's a, a Speaker of the House who doesn't necessarily accept Joe Biden's election win? And how fragile is democracy in the United States? Well, it's important that democracy be not just supported, but be nourished, if I can put it that way. And uh, Australia's position is very clear. Uh, the decisions for the United States Congress, of course, are a matter for them. It's a good thing that uh, Speaker Johnson uh, has been uh, elected. Uh, I'll be meeting with him today and I very much look forward to that. Uh, I've met uh, during this week with various uh, Congress and, and Senate members and all of them have been uh, very supportive of AUKUS at the event uh, last night. There were a range of Congress and Senate leaders uh, there. It was an opportunity to make sure that that they understand how important the AUKUS relationship is for Australia. But clearly Joe Biden has concerns about Donald Trump, the things he's saying and the influence that he has on the Republican Party. Uh, you know, he's, he's worried that the things that Trump says are a threat to democracy. Does that worry you about this, this powerful democracy actually being a threat? Well, this is a great democracy and uh, it's a great democracy that doesn't need uh, the outside commentary about their internal affairs from the Australian Prime Minister. Do you worry though uh, about what a, a second Trump presidency might look, mean for the alliance, for the world? I, I, I work with uh, President Biden uh, very closely. Uh, we have developed a, a great friendship. We now have uh, met on nine occasions, uh, having not just one dinner at the White House, but two the, the previous uh, two evenings. I mean, and that, that relationship's clear, but, but he says world leaders are always raising with him concerns about Trump. Are you? Well, what I do in private meetings is, uh, is keep uh, those meetings private. You, you won't be reading my text messages uh, with other world leaders. What about AUKUS? Let me ask you whether there's been much progress this week in the various meetings that you've held. Are you any more confident that the legislation will be passed by Congress by the end of the year to allow AUKUS to proceed? I'm very confident. And across the board, uh, there has been extraordinary level of support. I think President Biden's initiative in, in sending a bill uh, to uh, Congress uh, with uh, three, uh, more than $3 billion uh, attached to it to help with the industrial capacity uh, to uh, build the, the, the base uh, here for submarines is very important uh, as well and will alleviate some concern that was there from some US legislators that somehow the assistance to Australia would detract from the industrial base for the United States. Are you willing, I think that's been dealt with. Are you willing to top up Australia's contribution, which is $3 billion as well, to the US submarine production base? Now, our, our contribution is appropriate and it's a good thing uh, that the United States has uh, contributed uh, as well to alleviate any concern uh, which is there. Look, this is, this is of major benefit, uh, not just to uh, the, the workers and the base there at, at Virginia and other places, but of course, particularly for South Australia and Western Australia. This will be a jobs bonanza, and it will do more than the direct jobs as well bit like the former auto industry did, you'll see that multiplier. And there is, uh, this is uh, 
highly, highly advanced uh, manufacturing for Australia uh, will reap the benefit for decades to come. Final one, uh, Prime Minister, did you raise the case of Julian Assange with the President at all this week? Uh, I raise uh, the issue of Julian Assange with the administration on all of the occasions in which I've met members of the administration. Including the President? Uh, I, I have raised it with the President on a range of occasions. Uh, what about this week though? Uh, yes, I have. And, and, what, did, and what did he and, say? Well, we, we keep our discussions private. Uh, I make clear Australia's position that I made as Labor leader, it's the same position I hold as Prime Minister, which is that enough is enough. It is time that this issue was brought to a conclusion. It's time that Joe Biden stepped in and ordered the case be dropped? No, uh, Joe Biden doesn't interfere with the Department of Justice. Uh, Joe Biden is a president who understands the separation of the judicial system from the political system. That's an important principle. We just had a discussion about democracy and the nature of it. So is it time for a plea deal? Well, we, the Australian officials are working very hard uh, to achieve an outcome which is consistent uh, with the position that I've put. Prime Minister, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, David.